Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the life and death of Sid Barrett? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. So first I'll look at the background of Sid Barrett, and then I'll move to my analysis. Roger Keith Barrett was born in Cambridge, England on January 6, 1946. He took an interest in music from a young age and learned to play several different instruments like the banjo and the acoustic guitar. Sometime around the age of 13 or 14, he started using the name Sid. There are multiple stories about how this happened. For example, it was a nickname given to him by classmates or it was the name of a local jazz musician. When Barrett was 15 years old, his father died of cancer. This loss was devastating for Barrett. At that time, Barrett was a member of a band. His mother encouraged him in that endeavor to help him deal with his grief. He played with that band for a while, but they would break up in 1962. His interest in music, however, would continue. He started writing songs and went to college. He was influenced by the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, and Bob Dylan. In 1965, Barrett joined a band that would soon become Pink Floyd. He selected the band's name. Not long after this, Barrett started using LSD. There's often an emphasis of his use of psychedelics, but he also used a great deal of cannabis. In 1966, Barrett wrote the majority of the songs featured in Pink Floyd's first album. Barrett did well with the band for a while, but in 1968, he was heavily using LSD and was exhibiting a number of mental health symptoms, including catatonia, intense mood swings, hallucinations, disorganized speech, difficulties with memory, odd thoughts and behavior, depression, withdrawing socially, and paranoia. Even though his behavior did change gradually over time, at one point he went missing over a long weekend, and upon his return, his friends described him as a completely different person. He did not recognize them all the time. He didn't always know where he was. He developed this blank stare, like he was looking off into space, looking through people. During performances, he would do little or nothing. After one performance, he failed to reply to the questions of an interviewer. Instead, he just offered a blank stare. Because Barrett wrote many of the songs for Pink Floyd, they initially decided to keep him in the band, but not allow him to go on tour. But that arrangement was difficult to manage. His bandmates had trouble firing Barrett. Nobody wanted to be the one responsible for that decision or for telling him. But on April 6, 1968, the group announced that Barrett was no longer a member of Pink Floyd. Barrett would return to recording music. He released two solo albums, but then he drastically reduced his involvement in the music industry by 1974. He moved to a hotel in London, but ran out of money and moved in with his mother in Cambridge, in 1978. He gave up the name Sid and started using Roger again. He continued receiving royalties from his work with Pink Floyd. Bear was engaged for a brief time, but it didn't work out. He never married and he never had children. After his mother passed away, his only real contact with the outside world was his sister, Rosemary. In addition to mental health problems, he developed diabetes and stomach ulcers. Sid Barrett would die from pancreatic cancer on July 7, 2006, at his home in Cambridge. He was 60 years old. Now moving to my analysis, some family members of Barrett have said that he did not have any mental disorder. He saw a psychiatrist for a few sessions, but no medication was prescribed and psychotherapy was not necessary. They claimed he was self-absorbed. He wanted to be alone and that fully explained his unusual behavior. Other people who knew Barrett strongly disagreed, suggesting that his use of psychedelics was highly problematic and he had schizophrenia. I'm going to run under the assumption that he did have schizophrenia, but of course there is no way to know for sure. What we see here with Sid Barrett is an individual who during his younger years was a little unusual, but not in any dysfunctional way. When he started working with Pink Floyd, he was described as charismatic, outgoing, friendly, happy, and insecure. He was an incredible songwriter and musician. He was considered expressive 
idiosyncratic, adventurous, distinctive, and brilliant. His work on the guitar was unpredictable and innovative. His singing was stylized, almost like somebody who was letting their mind run off without any direction. His work was described as surreal and obscure. It seems as though the symptoms of schizophrenia initially appear to be an extension of his already odd and unusual personality, but eventually we see that the symptoms became destructive. There was no hint of true creativity or genius contained in the expression of those symptoms. The symptoms detracted from his abilities rather than enhanced them. It's understandable that some people did not understand what was going on with Barrett's condition. They looked at him and thought, he's just a creative artist. They're all a bit unusual. What I find interesting, though, is that many people around him did realize something was quite wrong, even taking into consideration his heavy drug use. They figured out that there was some other condition behind his behavior. So they realized the drug use didn't really explain all the changes they were seeing. One could argue that there is a fine line between genius and insanity in the world of music and in other artistic endeavors. At some point, Barrett crossed that line. He became difficult to follow or understand toward the end of his time with Pink Floyd. When he was writing music, he was always rephrasing, rewriting, his anxiety was increasing, and he was worried about becoming redundant. On stage, he would freeze or play something simple for the entire time, like the same note. After his career with Pink Floyd had concluded, he would get depressed for weeks when he was reminded of his time with the group. So for him, being rejected by Pink Floyd was a catastrophic loss, something that affected him for quite some time. Even though he did seem to bounce back with the two solo albums, he really struggled to put those together, and many of the songs on those albums have a melancholy tone, somewhat heavy and disturbing, which may have reflected his mood at the time. The question that often comes up in relation to Sid Barrett is this. What role did psychedelics play in his behavioral change? There are three major theories here. One, the psychedelics worsened or caused his schizophrenia. Two, he had symptoms of schizophrenia and tried to treat them with psychedelics. Or three, there is no connection between the psychedelics and the schizophrenia. Of course, there's no way to know for sure what the answer here would be, but what would be the most reasonable conclusion based on the scientific research? To answer this question, we have to go back in time a little bit and look at the history of psychedelics in the research literature. For many years, both in the popular culture and in the world of mental health research, it was believed that psychedelics led to illnesses like schizophrenia, depression, and anxiety disorders. Someone would use a drug like LSD, and sometime in the future, they would develop a serious mental disorder that they would not have developed if they had avoided drug use. Early research showed a variety of symptoms, from the short-term symptoms like acute panic that may resolve spontaneously in a day, to long-term treatment-resistant psychotic disorders. One particularly popular finding was that 50% of LSD users had flashbacks. Those, of course, are incredibly distressing. So if that finding was true, the drug is dangerous and should be avoided. The conclusion was that psychedelics caused both short and long-term problems, and this conclusion remained for many years. This was the prevailing wisdom. This model of causation is similar to what we see with many illegal substances. We know that heroin, cocaine, and alcohol use, for example, not only lead to mental health problems like addiction, but other conditions. So it's understandable why researchers and others reached these conclusions about psychedelics. More recent research seems to tell a different story. It indicates that there are some negative outcomes associated with psychedelic use, but for most people, they are restricted to the short term. The use of psychedelics is not strongly associated with long-term serious mental illness. The difficulty is that the older research had some methodological problems and was influenced by interpretations of anecdotal evidence more so than actual experimentation. Another problem was that the causal inference was quite easy to make. If we look at schizophrenia, for example, when somebody is going through the onset of that disorder, the symptoms are alarming and distressing, 
it's not unusual for a person in that situation to turn to drugs, including, potentially, psychedelics. This would explain why the symptoms of schizophrenia and psychedelic use tend to occur at the same time. It wasn't just a misunderstanding of psychedelics that led to these erroneous findings in older research, but a misunderstanding of schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is unlike many mental disorders in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, the DSM. If we look at a variety of disorders in the DSM, we often find that environmentability and heritability, that is the etiological contribution of stress and genetics, tend to be thought of as relatively equal. So for many disorders, it's 50-50, 50% caused by stress and 50% caused by genetics. The heritability of schizophrenia is estimated to be between 73 and 90%. So it's much more weighted toward genetics than most disorders. So moving back to that question, what happened in the case of Sid Barrett? Did psychedelics cause the schizophrenia? Did schizophrenia symptoms cause psychedelic usage? Based on the information available, I think the theory that makes the most sense is that Barrett developed schizophrenia, and due to the access to drugs afforded by his celebrity lifestyle, he was able to use psychedelics and cannabis as much as he wanted to in order to manage those symptoms. As these schizophrenia symptoms grew worse over time, his use of psychedelics and cannabis had a corresponding increase as well. The schizophrenia came first, then the psychedelics. It could also be that the two were unrelated. So it could have been that he just started using psychedelics and happened to develop schizophrenia. Perhaps the psychedelics were just part, again, of that lifestyle where he had access to all the drugs he could possibly want. So this is just my theory. Again, there's no way to know for sure what actually happened. It may have been that Sid Barrett did not have schizophrenia at all. It's important to note here that even though psychedelics are not strongly associated with long-term serious mental health disorders or addiction, they are certainly not considered safe. The short-term consequences can be devastating to functioning. They are responsible for many accidents and DUI offenses. Specifically, they are implicated in instances where people jump off of objects, like out of second-story windows, off of balconies, off of stair steps. People on psychedelics may believe they are capable of flight and not in an airplane, like on their own, like Superman-style flight. That misconception is usually clarified upon making contact with the ground. Even though psychedelics are not as dangerous as we once thought, there is a difference between safe and not as dangerous. If somebody was in a combat situation, like in a building, and enemy soldiers were throwing hand grenades into the building, if that individual saw three hand grenades roll into one room and one hand grenade roll into another room, they wouldn't look at the room with one hand grenade and say, that looks safe. What are the lessons learned from this case? Schizophrenia is a devastating illness that is mostly caused by genetic predispositions. Drug use can sometimes disguise the onset of symptoms. Both psychedelics and the symptoms of schizophrenia can decrease creativity and productivity. They do not enhance or improve performance. So they are not responsible for brilliance or genius. They always take away from that. Again, devastating illnesses that necessitate treatment. Those are my thoughts in the case of Sid Barrett. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comments section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be interesting. Thanks for watching.